the record. Yeah, so we, last week we did not talk about how many people ate 30 plants or more. I stopped counting on Tuesday and I think I was at 26 plants then. Okay. Um, and yeah, I, I kind of forgot to keep going on my list, but I think we'll do that in the portion fix group too, where we, you know, take a week and see how many plants you can get in in that week. I thought that challenge was pretty cool. Did you have a number, Beverly? Did you keep track for the week? No, I forgot, but I could literally count because I know what I eat pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. You could go off the list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. So, but the thing is, is that I eat other plants that aren't on the list. Yeah. I'm, my guess is, is that they probably just didn't list at all. Right. Cause otherwise your list would be ginormous. It's probably just off of whatever's on the food list already. And then they just took those things and tried to form a list. Um, cause yeah, there's like cucumbers wasn't even on that list. Really? I don't think so. I, I thought I looked again because I eat cucumbers almost every day in my shake. Um, and then you put it in your shake. I do. Yeah. With the wow. strawberry. Yeah. With the strawberry. It's super good. Huh. And then you can make it into a little mojito. You put huh. some mint leaves in it and uh, yeah, it's delicious. It's, yeah. With watermelon, maybe. Yeah. Sounds good. There and, were a yeah. bunch of things that were not on that list. I think so too. Like even tomatoes, maybe. I can't remember. There was something that seemed really obvious and I was like, oh, that should be on the list. <laughs> but anyway, we'll, <laughs> we can try it again. We maybe we'll make our own list. I mean, if it's a plant, mm -hmm. it counts, right? So, you know, what's yeah. really good um, because I was trying to do something with that as well is, you know, those mixed salads that they have at the store, you know, whatever, like if you just pick up a random one, there's like 20 different leaves in there. So you're like, Ooh, Right. Score. <laughs> you can count well, it's a good way to plants. get in a, a variety. You know? Yeah, get like the spring mix, and then you're yeah, like, totally. you're set. <laughs> yes. I I gotta tell you one good thing I did this week. Okay. Tuesday, Tuesday, I went to a nutritionist. So she was talking, getting my history and everything. So she's going like, "What are my obstacles? Like, what are my barriers?" So I said, "Well, my big one is." When I'm following something and I think I'm following it good and the scale doesn't tell me that, I either start something new or I just go, well, if, I, if I'm going to do it and I'm going to gain, I might as well just eat. So she goes, how often do you weigh? I said, every day. She's going, no, 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 no. Everybody says that. You shouldn't because the water goes up and down. She said, just weigh once a week. So I'm like, okay. So where the scale is, I pass it every day. If, and if I pass it, I get on it. So I took the scale when I got home from her and I put it under the bed. It's like, I know where it is, but it's too much trouble to get it. Right, so good, yeah. I am going through withdrawal. <laughs> <laughs> Are you yesterday, trying to get under the bed to get your scale every day? Like yesterday, I was, just, I don't know what was wrong with me yesterday. And, and I'm figuring it had to be because I didn't get on the scale yesterday morning. I was just in a bad mood and I didn't feel good and and I was tired and I mean everything that I could feel I did. I had to push myself to get through the exercise. I did it all, but I'm better today. But it's well, like good. one maybe day. Maybe you could maybe you could switch up the habit of getting on the scale with something else, like replace it with something. Like you know, have a glass of water mm -hmm. instead of getting on the scale, or I don't know, you know, something mm -hmm. that I'm using the tape measure. Yeah, something simple um, that's, or even a mantra, right? You just tell yourself something. Whether you get on the scale or not, you tell yourself something good. Yeah. Like it, it, it forces me to focus on what I'm doing, like yep. the food. And stuff it like does. That. It's forcing you to focus on your actions, not your results. Right, exactly. So, I, so it, I better get rewarded for it next week. <laughs> but what happens if you don't, Kathy? What happens if it's like, if the scale isn't any different? I, I don't know. Then, then I got to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next week we're going to talk about it. How, how the okay. scale went and what the update okay. is. So okay. let's, yeah, let's get into our topic because that this has a lot to do with that, right? So we're going to talk about consistency today. And it's not, yeah. 
it's not necessarily I, I look at consistency in a couple different ways. So first, let's talk about it as far as a plan. Um, I've always believed if you're going to put time and effort into something, it should be something you're going to do for a while, something that is going to be long lasting, right? So when I changed my food habits, when I started my weight loss plan, this was pre beach body. I decided I'm just not going to buy things that are pre-made. I am going to make them from scratch. So even if I wanted cookies, totally okay. I just have to make them from scratch. So I would have to work to get to whatever I wanted, right? And sometimes I would say, uh, I don't feel like making cookies, so I'm just not going to. Uh, sometimes I'd be like, I really want the cookie. So then I'm going to go through the effort of making the cookies. But in that the goal was always to make things from scratch, to stay on this kind of consistent plan, right? Not just to do these things to lose weight. It was just to do these things for health, for nutrition, to better the food that was coming into our house. At that time, I had little guys and I wanted to make better food for them. I wanted to have them have better choices. And so it was all, it was just an all around solution, but it required being consistent. It wasn't something just to lose the weight. Right. So I think that's kind of where we get hung up a little bit on a nutrition plan. As we think of nutrition plans as for the result of losing weight, not necessarily for the result of overall health and for the long run. So that's where you get some of the, I think the, uh, trends right, of, of dieting and the whole diet mentality, because it's all about quick, fast, how can I get this weight off? But then what happens when the weight's off? You can't resume the way you were eating prior to losing the weight because that didn't work, right? You also can't resume the same mindset prior to losing the weight because that's not working. You, you were overweight for a reason in mindset and food. So the consistency really comes in and it doesn't mean that you're every single day I'm at, you know, 1500 calories and every single day I hit 15 cal calories on the, on the dot. It's about always returning to a good nutrition plan, to health, to bettering yourself, to coming back to a positive mindset about your body, about your food, and just constantly returning to those things. So it's, it's, you know what I mean? It's more about the consistency of a long-term plan, not just being a perfectionist and being, you know, hitting that target every single day, because that that's no fun either. Like, you know, I, I actually went and got some crumble cookies. I don't know who's got crumble in their city, but it's a little fast food cookie chain. Um, they're amazing. And because my parents are over this week, so we're all going to split some cookies, but I'm consistently going to go back to my regular nutrition, right? Tomorrow I'll have the same food I had today before these cookies. Um, I had my shake today. That's a consistent thing. And when you can get your daily habits pretty consistent, then these little nuances, you know, having a cookie once in a while, having a beverage, whatever it is, they really don't take you off the plan. And mentally, you're, you know, well, tomorrow here's, it's not, a, I'm going to start a diet tomorrow, or I'm going to get back on track tomorrow. It's just, I'm going to resume healthy eating. I'm going to resume what works for me. I'm going to resume feeling good about things, that kind of attitude. Does that make sense? So that's where mm -hmm. I really like, I know a lot of people try different things, right? In the end, they're mostly the same. They have a calorie deficit for losing weight. Uh, most of them use whole foods. I mean, there's some weird plans out there that still process everything, <laughs> which doesn't make any sense. But you know what I mean? For the most part, they're similar, right? Some takeaway food groups, <clears throat> some, you know, have you eaten a time window? But their, their goal is similar. And so I think you just connect with what makes the most sense for you gives you the most nutritional value. And most importantly, you can do whether you're losing weight, maintaining your weight, gaining muscle, whatever your goal is, this plan works for it. 
because that's how you get really good at it. Just practice everyday practicing. And, you know, that's a whole nother talk in itself, but this whole idea of like, it, it is all practice to be better at something. I mean, I'm 10 years into that weight loss and I still have conversations with myself of, okay, we're getting a little too much sugar in your day. Now let's, you know, let's bring it back to the things that make you feel good. Let's come back in and focus in on the nutrition and not necessarily, um, you know, my weight hasn't changed a lot lately, but it's more just how, you know, it's going off how you feel and how things are working and how in control you feel. I find that's a big one for me. Like if you start feeling out of control with your choices, then it's a time to kind of rein it in, bring back that good nutrition and, uh, get, get, get the consistency going. Yeah. All right. So how's everybody feel about that? <laughs> I, I feel like I was, I was just so thinking, yeah. no, you're, I, I totally relate to everything you're saying. Um, did you ever read or listen to that book, Eat Smarter? I can't remember. Who I was. have not. Um, I've heard of it. Yeah. Because he talks about in there about people that go all in or, and then doesn't work and then give up, you know, and yes. I see yes. that a <laughs> lot, but <laughs> what yes, I think raising your hand. <laughs> I think we've all done it. Like you try so hard, you put all the effort in and then you're like, damn it, it's not working. So you just quit. Yeah. Right? Um, but then after a while, like I start taking tidbits of information I learned from to be mindset or, you know, portion fix or time nutrition or this guy or that book or whatever. And it's like little things that I can do, like drinking three of these waters a day. Like it was really hard to do at first. Now it's nothing. Like it's no big right. deal. But yeah. now my body craves it. If I don't have it, I'm like SpongeBob in that, <laughs> that show, like where he doesn't have any like liquid, right? <laughs> um, and then it's like the little things about you cooking, you making cookies. I did the same thing because it's like, if I want the damn cookie, I'm gonna have the damn cookie, but I'm right. gonna make it hard <laughs> to get the damn cookie, right? right? <laughs> and so at least then you have something that you've made from scratch. It's not processed, blah, blah, blah but you're not depriving yourself. And it's like all these little things, you have to like small steps and yeah. now they're just habit, right? So now it's like very random, I'll buy the cookies, but sometimes I do. Right. And it's all about balance to be able to do it, right? Yeah. And you're, and when you're consistently working on those little things, right, you're practicing, you're working on them, then they do become part of the day to day. And it's the differences that are the odd things. But when you go like, just like what you're saying, when you go all in and it doesn't work immediately, that doesn't mean that plan doesn't work, right? You're depending on what you've done to your body in the last couple of decades, it could take quite a while for it to turn the ship and adjust and, you know, realize what you're doing for it. I mean, our bodies are, are meant to keep us alive. They're all about survival. So if we have not been fueling them, treating them well, then it's going to take a little while for it to trust you that you're still going to keep feeding it. And that, you know, the fuel's coming in and like, oh, okay, I can let go of some of this fat storage or I can, you know, build some muscle. I can do the things, right? I mean, it's all about, that's where the consistency really comes in too, is, you know, if you think about too, like if you start and stop, you're still just where you were, but if you start and you just keep working on being better, even if it's a year from now, you know, that like all of a sudden you're, you know, you're really good at getting those veggies in and you're really good at getting water and you're going to feel better. And then you can keep tweaking it, right? You keep just adding into those little habits, just like atomic habits, you know, where that brick with that book, I highly recommend, you know, it's about just adding your habit stacking. You're just adding in one, it's the water. And then you add in another one where you're making sure you're getting your workouts in five days a week. And then you add in the one where you're getting your veggies on your plate. And all those things together, you will be different. And some of it might take longer for your mindset. That's a big one too. You really sometimes just have to let go <laughs> of some things that you think um, should happen and just be okay with, okay, this is where I am. And I'm going to work on these things that I know are good for me, even if I don't see things change immediately. 
even, even if I don't see that. Odds are you're still gonna feel better. You may not see a difference in your clothes as fast. You may not see a difference in the scale as fast, but odds are your metrics inside are gonna look better and you're gonna feel better from just getting better at nutrition. Deanna, can you talk about something? Um, yeah. I think Autumn has one of the, in, in her thing, because I was reading about it today, metabolism confusion. Is that carb cycling or calorie cycling? Um, I, I don't know that exact term. Um, she, do you know, Beverly, have you seen that video? So I don't know what she calls it. it. Um, it, but it's when you eat like low carbs on some days and high carbs on other days. Oh, okay. That's carb food. cycling. Yeah. So that's carb cycling. So is it carb cycling or is it calorie cycling? It's carb cycling. Um, when you're doing, yeah, because what you're doing is you're taking the carbs out for a couple of days and it is, um, it's depletes water in your muscles, but on that third day, you're adding some carbs back in so that your body continues to do well in workouts to still, you know, allow you to maintain muscle and to, so you're keeping the physique as you're kind of shredding out some of the water and some of the fat. If that makes so sense. So it's not one day low and one day high? I think it's, I think it's two days low to one day high, but I would have to look, let me see if I can dial it up. I think that um, there is a plan that might go back and forth, like you're saying, Kathy, and it was if, if for some reason when you're doing the other one, first of all, it's only like for three weeks, three weeks, I, yeah. I believe three weeks, yeah. and Can you're you only money? supposed to do it like once every six months at yeah. a maximum. Really? Um, yeah. Why is that? Um, because it's, it's just it's challenging on the body. I mean, it's a very challenging, um, phase for your body to go that low carb, um, long-term. I mean, I guess it, yeah, it starts going into other, your body needs carbs. Your brain needs carbs to be able to, to function properly. But and it's not like you're cutting them out all together, only on some days. So right. But this, food? yeah, carb cycling, the way she has the program is intended just to be a temporary shred. So if you have an event or you, you know what I mean? Or if you're in a competition, this, this original plan was from when she was a figure competitor and she would be getting ready for competition. So this is how she would eat going into that time of competition. And then she would resume regular nutrition. Oh, yeah. Oh. Cause your body yeah and I did look up the calendar it's so the first there's there's both plans on here there's two days of carb low carb and then a regular feed day and then there's also a plan that has two regular feed days and a low carb day so you can go either way yeah and that's basically what she had said was it was intended to if the first which is the two two no carb one with carbs, if you started to experience things that if you started feeling things like headaches or crabbiness, or you're really ridiculously tired or, um, yeah, I mean, there's other things that can pop up, but those are like the biggest ones. If you start seeing stuff like that, then you're, you very well may not be suited well for doing that type of carb depletion. Mm -hmm. And to switch they to the other the one. Keto flu. Like on, on the ketogenic diet, they say when you feel like that, they call it the keto flu. They do. Yeah. Keto is a little different because you add in more fat. So with the carb cycling, you're not adding in, like you're not balancing it out with fat. You're doing a, a lot of protein. Oh. You're at a much higher protein level. Um, mm -hmm. There is some more fat, but it's not like a keto diet where you're putting in that high a percentage of fat. Oh, mm. so on the low carb days, are they cutting it out totally in what I'm saying? Or is, you it know, um, they, do you have the 21 day fix booklet, right? Yeah, but it's the old one. It doesn't have that in it. 
It oh, okay, because I thought the original had the carb. It's a it's called countdown to competition. Is the chart? Um, I think it's I'll have the, to, huh? I think it's in the plan. Like if you look at the program materials, let me look at the it, program materials. Yeah. Not the original. I think it's 2014. What I have, it's really old. Mm -hmm. But if it's in the program materials of the actual, he doesn't have access to that right now. Oh, she doesn't. Oh, yeah, okay. Kathy has DVDs. Oh, let me see. Then I might actually have the old book. Yeah, I can see if we can find the. Because you want to know about containers, right? Basically. Well, I, I I guess so. Yeah, I have the containers. Is this is it in this one, Deanna? Um, that's what I. Yeah, have. I think so. I think or oh, was it part of Extreme? It might be. Oh, it might be Extreme. So yeah. I do have the container count though. Um, like for instance, you're talking about carb sideline. Yeah. That's an, isn't that an 80 day obsession? No. That was an, it was an 80 day obsession the it, last two weeks. It could be the countdown to competition plan is what I'm thinking of though. And I yeah. think it was released with the extreme. Yeah, oh, I think yes. you're right. And I don't have that one up, up here. That one. I can down. send you a picture of this, Kathy, when we get off of what the, um, of plan A, what it looks like for carb cycling. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering if I, if I did something like that just for a week, would it get me over my next barrier? No, because when you start, when you resume your regular food, you're going to put the weight back on. Yeah. Cause it's mainly, it's more it's water. water weight. Yeah. It's taking water out. Yeah. Oh, so, and that's, she talks about that too. She's like, when you resume after you've done three weeks of carb cycling and you resume a regular foundation fixed plan or time nutrition, the majority of the weight will come back on. Right. Oh, so then I'm not even going to try that then. Right. That's my, and that's right. That's my point, right? <laughs> you're, you're just even, yeah. you're doing so good at making my point for me today, right? Like it's all about getting good at just eating on a regular plan. And yeah and figuring out what works on this regular plan, not trying to like shift it or make it or push it because your body will respond then. You may lose weight this week, but it's gonna respond at some point. You know what I mean? In a way you may not like if you're forcing yeah. it to do something it doesn't wanna do. Yeah. My and body so it doesn't think the same way as my head. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't, yeah. It doesn't like to cooperate in that way. And so I like to think about, you know, when you're starting to be consistent, I like to get consistent with, you know, say your breakfast is just consistent. Breakfast is one of those things where even if you travel or on vacation, you can generally have the same types of things, no matter where you are, you know, breakfast foods are pretty, you know, pretty much the same most places. So like, so if you're used to two eggs and some toast, whatever your breakfast is, maybe have a little spinach with it, you can likely get that at a hotel, uh, on vacation, wherever. So, but you keep that meal the same, you know, it doesn't have to be the same foods, but it's the same stuff. It's a protein, it's a carb, it's a veggie, whatever your plan is. And then that way, you know, when you get a couple meals like that, that are really consistent, then if you're having some variation in other meals, it's not quite as life-changing in your calorie counts during that day, right? So then, or, and maybe then you can tweak that third meal to, you know, make sure you always have whatever you need for that meal. If it's a protein, a veggie and a carb and a blue or whatever it is, right? Whatever works in your plan, but it's really working on those consistent things to, that's how you kind of start it. And then um, I also think make, make it, you kind of check in on yourself. Like if you feel like you're grabbing things in between, you know, watching for that piece, things you're not writing down, things you're not tracking, um, maybe a little extra in the containers or that peanut butter teaspoon. <laughs> I know that always gets everybody <laughs> turns into a teaspoon. <laughs> instead of a teaspoon. So it's things like that. Um, you can get more consistent in how you're portioning, you know, keeping meals kind of similar so that you are getting the same amount 
of food in there. Um, how, how have you guys like helped yourself be consistent? Well, I've, um, I, I mean, this is now we're probably like seven years now, but I swapped my breakfast for the shake. So oh, okay. Yep. I have a shake and an apple every morning. It used to be, um, I would make my shake and cut the apple and then drive to work and just eat along the roadway. So by the time I got to work, I do, you know, whatever. Now that I'm at home, it just, by, I pushed it out, but now by 1030 ish, I make my shake. I sit down, I eat my apple and yeah. I recently added in peanut butter. So, <laughs> but that is totally consistent to the point where I bought a travel, um, blender to take with me when I go somewhere. Yeah. Because it's so like, that's what I do. Right. Yeah. And then you don't really have to think about it. Yeah. You don't have to think <laughs> yeah. about it as much. Yep. And if ever I swap out my breakfast shake for like eggs or something like that, I always add a vegetable or whatever, but even when I do that, I'm still hungry. So I'm like, all right, I just have to, I'll have my shake for like lunch or pre-lunch or something, but I can't let it go all day or else I'm like totally hungry. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. And you kind of, then you get to learn your hunger cues too, right? When you um, are consistent about things, you know, you know, by this time you're probably going to be hungry and you can feel that. And then you can manage what size meals you need to have to get to the next meal and kind of work it all out that way. Yeah. Anybody else have any tips on how they stay consistent? <laughs> kind of, I eat a lot of the same stuff on repeat. I mean, my, my most varied meal is my dinner. So, um, but yeah, I've been doing it for so long, um, since 21 day fix released. Um, you know, I just, yeah. And before that I, I pretty much was, I was so consistently eating the same thing that I caused myself to actually have a sensitivity to that thing, which was, Oh oats. yeah. I remember we talked about that. <laughs> yeah. I, I ate oatmeal every single morning for like years with fruit and, um, and yeah. So, I mean, now I, I rotate between, um, eggs over easy and brown rice cereal or eggs over easy and, um, a sweet potato or a carrot, like the carrot bake stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, my lunch is always like, uh, well, at least during the week or really six days a week is a spinach salad with, um, veggies and, um, a half a serving of chicken usually, or, uh, or tuna and, avocado <laughs> and then it's a um it's a salad dressing that that we make that we got from the ultimate reset and that's my lunch my shake is my afternoon snack I have fruit then too and then dinner is usually a protein and um one and a half servings of veggies because that's all I've got left in my day <laughs> right <laughs> um Sometimes there's another carb there. Um, and then I have, a, and then I usually have another half of a protein because I have half of a shake like in pudding yeah. and, um, at, at night. So yeah, I mean, it's like, I've got, I have all the containers in my brain. I usually don't miss them. I will be eating like from, once I start eating in the afternoon, like once I eat my lunch, then I'm just eating like all the way through until almost the time that I stop eating at the end of the night, like, cause I'm to get all the food in. Right. So. Yeah. I'm at, I'm at a point now where I'm, I'm missing usually a fruit by the end of the day. And unless I have an app, uh, not an apple, if I have a banana, I'm good because that's two right there. And who, right, who yeah. has a banana? I mean, I do when I have to, but that's two fruits and I have the hardest time with fruit, but today it happens to be a carb. And I'm like, 
do I let it go or do I just eat it so my body doesn't get used to this? I eat it. Yeah, yeah eat I always it. eat it. Yeah, but now it's 837 <laughs> for me. And I'm like, do I want to eat a carb? Do you, are you in a position where you are in need of losing? I could still drop, I don't know. It depends. Like, to be quite honest with you, I, you're recording this, aren't you? <laughs> I had a BM this morning or yesterday. So my weight, which I thought went up like 10 pounds, actually only went up like six pounds. So that was a good thing that I have that. But it's, you know, I still would like to lose that six pounds, but I'm not, I'm not like going crazy about it. I just said, you know what? She's doing this fixed group. I'm going to get in the fixed group. I'm going to do it. I'm going to follow it and I'm going to see what I can do. Mm -hmm. So, but are you eating in, in tracking loss, today? I realized I'm down a carb. So yeah. Are you eating in weight loss or are you eating in maintenance? Um, I think I'm just, yeah. Cause I'm, I took the deficit. Out. I took the things out. Yeah. Okay. Then eat the carb. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Otherwise you're in too much of a deficit and your body won't respond. Yeah. Hmm. I, yeah. I'm big Let on me ask you this quickly. In. A beach bar that does count as a yellow these days. It's a half red, half yellow teaspoon. Yeah. Okay. Because I was always counting it as a red, just no. a red. No, it's a half <laughs> yellow and a teaspoon. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I would, you know, along those lines, like, so if, if, if someone's new to portion fix or you've struggled with portion fix, I'm also a big fan of even if you eat on maintenance in portion fix so that like, like I was a person who was always worried I wouldn't have enough food. So like, if you're like that, then eat on maintenance on portion fix, you're still getting way better nutrition and you will still see things change in your body. It may not be these, you know, drops in weight, but you'll likely, especially with a workout plan, see changes in inches with that, but you'll get good at good nutrition, right? You'll be better about the nutrition, eating enough, feeling fueled, eating good foods, whole foods versus just saying, I can't follow this plan. So I'm not going to do it. I can't eat in weight loss. So I'm not going to do it. Or that's not enough food. Like I have always been categorized in a for weight loss and I've never eaten an a because I saw that. And I'm like, no shot, no shot. I'm going to follow that. <laughs> So I've always been in B or C or, and I've, I've been all the way up to E for, um, 80 day obsession, but the point being, it's still better to eat well, eat nutritious than to not do any of it. Right. right. It's still better to be in maintenance and, and follow a good plan or even over maintenance, just you're, you're eating better than you would be if you're just, you know, going in for what's at the counter and whatever you're bringing home from the grocery store. So even if that's where you start, that's better. And you're learning the plan and then you keep tweaking it to whatever is going to work for you. And I don't know if you would um, watch my other video, but like autumn's big on, if you're, you know, within that pounds under 10 pounds, maintenance is where you really see a shift in your body composition. And most trainers talk about that too. Like your calorie deficit needs to be much smaller, the closer you get to your goal weight. Right in order well, to, I, I think I need to like figure out the, whether I'm in maintenance or, uh, weight loss, because I mean, I'm, I'm adding in the 750 and then I'm taking out, I mean, it says 600 for a workout, but it's 645. It's really not. Oh, like no, crazy. you should be using the moderately intense for 645. So that's only adding 400 and taking out 750 for weight loss, but then you don't take the 750 out for maintenance. So you just add in 400 for the workout. Okay. So your then weight I'm still in deficit. times 11. It still be, it's B all the way anyway. It wouldn't Every be. Every single one. It wouldn't be. You, would, know, you, know, not, you, know, you mind say, sharing your weight, Marcy? 165. Oh, okay, in we're the, the same. The, yeah. In the back of the fixed book, it says when you're in maintenance, you take that number and you times it by 13 instead of 11. That would only be, uh, that's a different set. Yeah. So that's a, that could be an older calculation. So now what we do is we use the 11 
And then you say how intense your workouts are and you change the calories according to that. Um, so I think maybe in an old calculation, there was like an 11, 12, 13, and that's how also how they figured out your activity level. But now we're just doing weight times 11. And then, um, you're either at, you know, adding a certain amount for workouts, subtracting a certain amount. So Marcy, you would be at two, uh, 2215 for maintenance, 2215 for your maintenance calories, which is, um, D. Is that right? Yeah, that makes and sense. I just had That's a glass of wine and call it even. Huh? <laughs> Everly <laughs> got me. <laughs> so, so that would, so you're eating in B, which is, um, 15, 1500 to 1799, 1500 to 1800, I think is the bracket. Um, mm -hmm. and then C yeah. you could, you could try C and see how you do on that one. Cause I like D is also my maintenance. Um, I like to eat and see because I also know that I grab a handful of things here and there from time to time. So it probably evens out, but when I'm really, you know, depending on how you're feeling on it, if you're really burning it, I'm also really sedentary. So I noticed that like my calorie burn is under 2000. I average around 1900. And so that's the C bracket too. I'm jealous of your C bracket, right? It's good. Come on up with us. Come up to B. What do you? I'm at B. C, oh, I'm in B. Come on up to C. I, mean, I can't. I get... haven't done. I haven't done B long enough. What? With B, you get three carbs, three fruit, mm -hmm. four reds, and four greens, and then everyone always gets an orange and a blue. Like, what are you getting extra in C? You get another carb, another um, protein, vegetable. another vegetable. Yeah. You get all that. Yeah. And more teaspoons. You get one more teaspoon too. Yeah. I'd be able to yeah. eat the teaspoons <laughs> with the peanut butter <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Okay. So, but definitely think, think about it because, um, when, where you're at in with the workouts, that's what helps change your body composition at this point. Right. So you can lower your body fat. So, it, your scale may not change as much during this time, but you can definitely change in inches and body composition, but you have to have enough fuel for your body to let the fat stores go at this point. Cause right now your body fat percentage isn't high enough where it's like, oh yeah, let's let some things go here. It's like, we're, we're really happy right here. I'm going to keep everything. <laughs> I do wonder though, because I wasn't really using the containers before. It was sort of just a, oh, I know I had a red, oh, I have a yellow, blah, blah, blah. You know, I wonder if maybe I was already eating in May. You could have been. You could have been. Really, yeah, because yeah. I wasn't really gaining, right? So, yeah. And you shouldn't gain if you're on um, maintenance or even a step below maintenance. Um, mm -hmm. And weight loss, what you would see, like if you're in a too low of a bracket, what you're going to see is not necessarily like at, at where you're at with working out, you're probably not going to see a, a weight gain. You're going to see a weight stagnation plus a stagnation in your muscle building abilities, right? Or you, everything's just going to kind of stay the same. You're not necessarily going to increase any muscle mass or, um, you know, change in any body composition ways. Okay. So Deanna, I, yeah. I eat in the first one in, in that old book, there's only four. So yeah. I don't know if you can read that. My numbers come below the 1200. So I've what's, always eaten in the four. Yeah. What's your weight, Kathy? Do you mind sharing? 136. So let's take it on a new calculation. So yeah. So 1496 is, um, okay. Let's sorry. Sorry. Okay. I forgot to add in my 400. 1896 is your maintenance. Right. 1896. And then if we minus 750, yep, that puts you at 1146. So, yeah, so you'd be an A with starting at the 1200 to 1400. But I'm so stagnant. Do you think I need more food? I think it really depends. Yeah, it depends, right? Like, so you know you're not eating enough. If you're like, that can affect your sleep. It affects your energy level if you're low energy. So if you're not getting through your workouts very well, um, if you are, you know, more tired during the day, like you've just kind of lost 
that some of that zip. I mean, I do that in the afternoons regardless. <laughs> because I think it's just, it's how it goes some days. Um, but you will feel it in a lack of energy and um, you might have some brain fog with it. It's, it's not just stagnation, right? So it really depends on how detailed you feel like you've been with the plan too. And in combination with your exercise. So if you have anything that tracks your calorie burn, um, like a Fitbit or, you know, Apple watch or any of those things, something that can kind of give you an idea. It's not, it's not going to be a hundred percent, but if you use the averages, it will at least give you an idea of what you're burning. And then you can kind of compare that to like, what plan am I on? So if you're like, if I'm looking at my burn average as 1900, but I'm only eating in that 1200 calorie bracket, that's a pretty big disparity, right? And Mm -hmm. so you just, it's taking all that data. Like, am I measuring when I'm eating on the plan? Am I eating all my containers? Am I eating the containers I'm supposed to eat each day? Or am I adding in something or swapping something or missing something? So you kind of have to look at all those things before you make any big shifts up. Does that make sense? All right. So I would check out that. Um, but do you feel like you're low energy on things or like? I don't feel like I'm low energy, but the thing is I'm not making any progress for months and months and months. Yeah. So and do you feel sometimes... like you're consistent? Mm, no, not all the time. Yeah. See, and, and it makes a big difference, right? Because I, I think sometimes yeah. we should talk about this one in another call too, like this whole idea of self-sabotage too. I think sometimes we'll drop a little And they'll be like, oh, dropped a little. I can have something extra here or I can do this or I don't have to do this because I just dropped a little. I'm doing good. And then then it's just gone. That or you say, oh, my gosh, I kicked my butt today and did an awesome workout. And so I deserve a little something sweet. Yes. Yeah. The treat yourself gets a little out of control, right? Like I deserve this extra. I I deserve that extra extra tablespoon of peanut butter right well, and my theory without counting them yeah my theory is you deserve what you want right but that doesn't it doesn't it's not required to have exercise none of that's required like you need to think about food not as a reward uh for either the scale going down or for a hard workout right it's you, you can have that food if that's something you really want and it means something to you and you're going to enjoy it. And that's how you get out of that cycle of rewarding yourself because it's also okay to be like, I, did, I killed that workout and now I'm going to eat on plan. And you can feel just as good about doing that as having that you know extra peanut butter, whatever it is. For me, for me getting sick was probably... It was, it made me very cognizant of, of, um, what I was putting in my body at all times. Mm -hmm. And it made me really come to grips with my gosh, I, everything that is going in me and on me is what my body is made of. And I mean, like our cells are made up of what we intake and looking back as to like, why I struggled so much as like a teenager. I was, I had so much pain. I was, I had headaches nonstop. I pretty much ate ibuprofen like it was candy. I, my cycles were, were not great. (laughs) They were not fun. I had awful pains with that. I mean, I was just always a mess. I was always tired. I, but I fueled myself with junk because I knew no better. I thought, it was just about satiating my hunger. That was it. Start my day with pop tarts or or toaster strudels or a bagel with cream cheese or and soda, and then eventually sometimes coffee, and you know follow it up with uh you know those mystery potatoes at at lunch or French fries and chocolate covered donuts and cherry pie 
hostess cherry pies and, and you know whatever yeah, like, other thing I came yeah. out of my you, you know vending machine. <laughs> well for me it was like I was thin I didn't care I just you know was eating it was yeah. just me I just ate and then you know going going through the drive through heck yeah I mean that was that was great worked at McDonald's for a month that was awful <laughs> they loved me but I hated that job but I mean you know french fries you know, give me whatever. I, I was a walking mess. No wonder I was depressed and, you know, clinically and had anxiety and all sorts of things. I had zero uh, micronutrition in my life other than, you know, on occasion, if we had salad with our, you know, spaghetti at dinner or huge slab of meat that, my body didn't digest well that I always was like, gosh, why do I always feel like crap after I eat this? I mean, so yeah, when I got sick, I really got clear. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. I'm with you. I had the same thing. I didn't get quite as sick as you did, but I like, I had the same thing, but, and that's a great point, right? Especially with our consistency, when you're talking about changing your health, you have to consistently give your body those micronutrients the vitamins, the minerals, the things it needs to fight because cells don't live that long. It's not like you give it something and then, oh yeah, your body's great, right? Mm -hmm. It has to consistently get good nutrition for cellular level to be functioning at optimal points, right? Optimal working, yeah, whatever I'm trying to say there, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, you can't just have the salad one day and the scale changes and your cells change and everything's great in the world. It has to be an everyday thing. And I, I think what deters us, cause all of a sudden I say it has to be an everyday thing. And you're like, I can never have a donut again. Oh. <laughs> and that's not how it works. Right. So you have to kind of get out of that mindset of it's not a daily punishment. It's like, you're feeling great through these things. And occasionally you have something occasionally you revisit you know, something you like to have or whatever it is, but it's really about that day to day of giving your body the things it needs so that then you feel better. And honestly, you start craving differently too, because there are things like, I remember when I did 21 day fix the very first time and followed the food plan to a T. And I remember I'm like, when I'm done with this 21 days, I'm going to go down and get this almond croissant that I love down at the bakery. And I'm going to, I'm going to, it's going to be amazing. Right. And it's funny. I went and got it and like, I ate it and I was kind of like, huh, I mean, it was good, but it wasn't like, oh my God, I can't believe I've been thinking about that for 21 days. Like what, it wasn't that good. And it kind of, you are like, now a little disappointed in yourself, right? right? And then you're kind of, well, but the, I take it more as a learning, right? You're like, okay, I don't need to do that again. I don't have to feel like I was deprived this whole time because I didn't have it because it wasn't as magical as I made it out to be. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of foods that I just don't find appetizing anymore. It's like, eh, yeah, I'd rather have this. And that's what I do. I, I save, I save my, my treats that I call them treats, even though really the foods that cause inflammation in my body, that's really what most of my treats are like my, you know, drinking and sweets and, you know, added sugar. And that is why I limit them is because the more I have of them, the worse I feel physically, right. mentally, emotionally. And I see that now. And so I'm like, I don't want to not feel like I want to get out of bed in the morning. I want, and I don't want to hurt. I don't want my joints to be achy. I want to feel good. I want to live yeah. my life to my fullest. So that's why I choose the others. Um, but yeah. So. Totally agree. Hi, Kelly. We didn't even get a chance to say hi when you jumped on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm alive. I'm here. I haven't seen the girls in like three days. I'm surprised that, um, actually I know we're really busy as heck, but I'm, I'm here. I'm still, I'm still kicking. Perfect. Good. So does anyone have, I, we're kind of, we're all down to three minutes here. Does anybody have any questions about anything this week or labels you want to talk about or anything you want to talk about with the plans? 
I will say, oh. I will say real quick, when y'all brought up the peanut butter, I did really well on my peanut butter intake. Nice. I actually measured okay. it. Um, also too, and I, I was more mindful this week since I'm going through my nutrition training right now. Um, I've been keeping, um, which is, it's, it's very similar to portion fix, um, the, uh, precision nutrition, um, little, um, they've got their measurements just a little bit different, but it's got, it's got the same colors and all of that. It's just containers versus, you know, a handful of thumb or whatever palm size. Of a palm. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but, um, when y'all were talking about your, um, your calories, Mine are, I think, just a little over 2,000, but it is a lot of freaking food. That's all I got to say. And so it's it's hard for me to eat all of that. Uh, but I have like, I think, six carbs, probably a little smaller portions, but six carbs, six fats, which that would be like the blue and the, and the arch container. But anyway, point being is I think I feel better when I eat better. And so I'm really making sure that I'm eating all my veggies, my, yeah. the, the real greens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause you know, everything's green for me, but anyway, and, um, I think the protein might be a little bit less, but, um, I think my macros are pretty much like in 30% on each of them. So anyway, yeah. um, so it's, it, um, it was just a good uh, week to kind of tune in my my eating and things that I need to work on, including drinking my water. I struggle sometimes on that too. So, yeah, I do too. I end up doing a lot at night. It seems like because it's like I find myself getting more thirsty through the day, and I'm like, oh yeah, well, I haven't been drinking my water. <laughs> but I yeah, I was excited about my uh, my peanut butter that I did actually measure it. I did, I think Lily talked about it last week or the week before about just getting the spoonful and then putting like a couple of um, dark chocolates on there. Was that you, Lily, that said that? That, that was like the best spoonful of peanut butter I've had in a long time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> with, with uh, toasted coconut on it, yeah. Oh yeah, that's right, the oh, toasted I coconut. Know, I, 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 yeah, I didn't go that far, but I did. I put my, my dark chocolate chips on top and enjoyed it, every bit of it, so. See, and yeah. then you're totally satisfied, right? You're like, I got my chocolate, I got my peanut butter, and it was still all on plan, and it tasted yeah. delicious. Instead of getting the jar and, and literally scooping yeah. it out. Yeah, yeah, I had to be- Or going for a Reese's right. even, or you know what I mean? Yeah. Getting something, something else. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Hi, Lily. Hi. Sorry, we're, we're driving. That's all right. I should take a picture while you're on here really quick. Here, I'll get make sure my reflection is all right. Okay, ready? Everybody, cheese. Okay. Well, good. Why me make a picture? Oh, so, Lily's have, got her label. Seen, I love it. Even driving, she's got labels. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm not driving. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, at least. Have you seen these? I like haven't. Uh uh. So they're, so they're cauliflower bites. Um, they are 90 calories per serving, which is one ounce, but they are like freeze dried snacks almost. And the ingredients are organic cauliflower, organic, uh, high olus of sunflower and or safflower oil, sea salt and organic maltodextrin. That's it. So it's, uh, and my, my husband says they're good. <laughs> they're very salty and crunchy. <laughs> Um, there's seven grams of fat. There are six carbs, two fibers, and two protein. Go oh, and two yeah. sugars. So you'd you'd have to have a teaspoon on there for that amount of fat, at least. But I mean, maybe they yeah, green. They might be a green because if they're just like drying them, you'd still have the fiber in it. Um, I'm not yeah, sure. I mean, it, it looks like it looks like a piece of cauliflower, literally. But it's yeah. just like they freeze dried a piece of cauliflower and they're really crunchy and good and salty. Yeah. You'll have to fill us in on if you feel like there's a weight gain from the salt quantity. Well, I can already tell you my lips are like 
parched because I've been standing in a parking lot with the dust bowl flying around me for all day today. So I'm already parched. So it's just, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to tell you or not. Right, right. So. Well, they sound like a nice crunchy option rather than having chips. Yes, yes. Yeah, and the fact that they have two dietary fibers to six carbs seems like a good balance for sure. Yeah. That's better than chips do. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I'll have to check yeah, this out. Good. I'm going to have to go to Costco pretty soon. Yeah, I almost stole them out of somebody's cart. I was like, where did you get those? Because <laughs> somebody's <laughs> like, hey, that's my cart. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Woman in Washington yeah. stealing cauliflower out of people's carts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I love it. I, I have a label. There's, there's no label on it. It just has the ingredients because they okay. make it in the store. So I want to know. It's called Spanish eggplant. I put it over bread or something. It had the ingredients are eggplant, onion, olives, garlic, tomatoes, parsley, salt, pepper, olive oil, and red wine vinegar. Well, it sounds good. It sounds like a lot of vegetables. It does. Yeah. Some olives. You'll have olive oil and olives as your fats. So depending on what the ratio is, it could be a teaspoon. It could be a blue. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's red. It could be an orange too if it's olives, right? I think olives are blue. Are they orange? No, no, olives are orange. Orange. Okay. Yeah. So it could be orange or teaspoon depending on the quantity, but you're probably with a, a, a green for sure in there. Yeah. 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 It's really good. Sounds good. Is it a spread, Kathy? Is it what? Like a spread, like you put it on yes, something? Yeah, yeah, it's like a spread. You could do so it on those super thin rice cakes that everybody's had on here, you know, because yeah. then they don't count for much, like a slice of bread does. You, I, what was it, like six of them or something, the Trader Joe's ones were? can't remember. It was a lot. Hmm. Yeah, you can slice up vegetables too and just use it as a dip. Yeah, yeah. yeah there you yeah. go. Win on some cucumber or something yeah. else. Yeah, that'd be good. Sometimes I just eat it right out of the container. It's right. So good. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, you guys. Well, it's time to hop off. I'm going to go uh, have some Vietnamese pork and some cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I would like a cookie too, please. I need to eat another carb, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. You. It was a good night. Yeah, yeah it was great to you see know. you all. And uh, yeah, any questions or any uh, stuff or any things you want to talk about in the next coming weeks, just post it in the group and we'll add it to the call. All right. So tomorrow, we'll see you later. Oh, tomorrow. Yeah. What is tomorrow? Oh, squat, oh, squat challenge. Squat challenge, squat challenge. challenge tomorrow. Squats. How many squats can we do in a day? We got to see well, how many we can do to do see at least 50. Yeah. Do at least 50. And if you want to go more, then go more. But take a picture and post how many you actually did. Yeah. And we're going to add it an all easy, up together. An easy way to do an easy way to do it is to every time you go to the bathroom, yeah. do 10. Do 10. There you go. Time. Yeah. <laughs> so drink, drink lots of water. And, and then get your squats. Yeah, You'll go to the bathroom happen. five times throughout the day. <laughs> Maybe take the picture earlier on in the day. And don't take I know the picture I in the bathroom. No. Don't take the picture in the bathroom. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, I'll All have right. the picture and then I'll just say how many I did. That's a good idea. <laughs> Sweaty <laughs> self is fine. You don't have to be squatting in the picture. That's totally no. fine. Yeah. No. <laughs> just give us the number. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, we'll Thank see you, you in the groups tomorrow. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye,